In this video, we're going to build a pin leg fire pit. This is a tripod pin leg fire pit. It's epic fire. All right, I want to build a fire pit. What I'm thinking is a tripod, because with three legs, it'll always sit full, you know, steady on uh, anything, right? Four legs requires some precision, which uh, that's not what this project's all about. But also, where would you want your fire height-wise? I'm thinking if I could warm my hands while sitting in a regular chair, something about like that. Let's see, 16, 18 inches. The top of it was 18 inches. Good. Huh. Yeah, it's not so bad. So what I have is I have a, the end of a tank. I don't know where this came from. Just stole it off a scrap metal pile. It's already cut, a little bit rough. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And it's, uh, huh, I don't know how thick that is. It's not very thick. What is an eighth of an inch thick? That's not bad. Let's see what we can do. Just some real quick figuring here. Uh, let me get a, a stick. Okay. So let's say I want this thing to be 16 to 18 inches tall. Let's do for 18. In the bottom of the flange. Oh gosh, it's like, okay, maybe 14 inch legs. So what I'm thinking is I got, I got rebar. Right? And I'm gonna bend up little pin legs. Alright, I've settled on the arbitrary length of, what was it? <laughs> 36 inches. So, I'm just gonna give it a little cut. That's fine. Well, these three have pretty similar angles and shapes to them, so I'm just going to roll with this one. <laughs> Got kind of off center, you know, but that's why I made them a little bit long so I have something to work with. I should just remake that though. These two are pretty good. No, I'm going to cut them. I'm going to cut them. Okay, so these are plenty long to cut some off because you know, I'm shooting for 16 inches or something. And if I install these at some crazy angle, I could reach 16, but I'd like to have, have them sprawl out a little bit. I'm going to cut 5 inches off the length of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. Four and a half inches off of these. That's the plan. That's the ticket. So I'm gonna just sort of get a an average 12 and a half inch length there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Took 
my mark here. That's good enough. I'm gonna bend the, bend the shit out of this one. Let's test fit this. Let's see, did I go too far? Holy hell, that's right at 16 at an angle like that. That might be fine. Maybe I'll go a little taller. I'll shoot for 17 inches tall. Just so I don't have to redo anything. You know, so I'm gonna cut the the long. I'm gonna cut the tabs a little short and just have something to weld to. Like that. Alright. I'm gonna do that to the rest of these. Alright, I got my three legs bent. I need to figure out the spacing on this. I think I'm just gonna eyeball it. Uh, oh, oh, it's gonna look vintage. Yeah, bro. So that's about 16 inches. See how far from the fire and three quarters, five. Okay. Go up a little there, down a little there. So anyways, all that nonsense, what I'm gonna do, what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna mark five and a half inches there. Five and a half inches right there. How do you divide a circle into three parts? I know how to do halves. Uh, yeah, yeah, I said I was gonna eyeball it, so I gotta, I gotta be true to my word. You know what, I'm just gonna build one and see how that goes. Alright, so I got a 2x4 here that's uh, 15 and a half inches long and that gets me to a total height on the rebar of just under 16 inches, which is pretty good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my 5 and a half inch spacing on, uh, on this fella here, tack it, and I'm going to come over here, check it, and tack it. Right at five and a half. Right at five and a half. Support it on my angle. I'm just gonna lock it in a little bit better. All right. So the other thing I was thinking was uh, gonna put in a third leg. Something like that. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a, put a little bend in the end of this, cut it off the tuck up under there, and weld that in to give it some uh, more stability. Yeah, so something like that is the plan. It doesn't look so bad, but I think I'm going to like that, that shape. legs worked out okay you know I went ahead and put it the other two and cut off the tails of it you know uh, I'm 270 pounds I think that'll be sufficient all right so I'm gonna build a little bottom grate to build the fires on and uh, I'm just gonna continue using the same rebar that I got I don't want to lose too much depth you know I only have six inches to play with uh, so I'm kind of thinking if I built something 16 inches long, that would still leave me uh, more than a fist. How big is a fist? Yeah, it would be four inches of depth, which would be pretty good. All right, so this is the uh, sort of the, the rough in shape I'm doing. So the first one was 16 inches. And then the second one was 15 inches. 
and the third one is 12 inches and I think I'll be able to get somewhat you know consistent spacing with that setup there do uh, do a, a, a few perpendicular ones that I weld to then you know build it upside down and flip it over set it in there maybe it'll look all right so this is a <laughs> a little bit rough but the idea is it'll be buried in ashes and no one will see it but this it's actually harder to construct this than it was doing the pin legs which is kind of surprising to me I just needed to clean up a few places so I could uh, actually get a an arc to spark. Oh, come on. Well, I ran out of wire. I don't have any more on hand. Oh well, that's that's close enough. Guess will be a another trip to town. All right, got some more wire. Swap that out. Let me recheck my settings. I like to be on max, somewhere around two on the wire speed. You know, the best advice I ever got from a welder, <laughs> I said, hey, you got any advice for someone starting out welding? He literally said, Opened up, open it up and look at the chart and do what it says. Uh, the actual legs I thought turned out real well because I had a great ground. You know, this is a, is a little copper or brass thing that screws in and then I ground those and that was, ooh, primo. You know, I'm not a welder. I'm a dude with a welder. So, you know, let's, my, my, my welds aren't too hideous. You know, I can, I can lay them out sometimes. Other times they are kind of hideous, but, you know, this is, this is just, you know, part of the learning experience, just having fun doing projects and whatnot. You know, the, the welder I have, this little firepower, I actually bought that from a friend. He worked at the company that manufactured these, uh, you know, local here in town. And, uh, you know, they're assembled in America with, you know, Chinese parts or whatever. And they have this deal where you can buy uh, refurbished or, yeah, you can buy the refurbished equipment for like half price if you work there. So he bought this thing, you know, it might be a $150 welder and he got it for... 75 or something and he played around with it for a couple months and he lived in an apartment he's like you know i'm not gonna be welding in my apartment i think i'm gonna sell it so i offered to buy it and that's how i got into the uh, the the home gamer welding gig you know it's it's worth uh it's worth experimenting trying new things not be afraid of it you know i would never done a uh, a pin leg before I might have done it backwards actually you know I, I don't know if that should be you know inverted with the two things here but this is the way it felt right to me but the tripod that's a very simple simple thing you can't go wrong you can't build a, a crooked tripod that won't sit you know <laughs> uh, this is the all terrain uh, style anyways uh, thanks for watching you know maybe I'll get some uh, fire action for the in scenes alright see all that smoke coming off the bottom that's the paint cooking off so I'm gonna get out of here 
because I don't want to be breathing that crap. So I built the fire up <laughs> way bigger than what needs to be in there. I'm trying to cook the last of the paint off. Whoa. Uh oh. Got a stick in the grass. Crazy bra. Uh oh, some more fire. So with my tank for this fireplace, I didn't have to cut anything off. There's actually behind the barn, been sitting there forever. You know, someone else had cut that tank off. Who knows how long ago and abandoned it. So I stole it. But here we have a, you know, I, I saved this tank. This is a pressure tank for the well, the water well. And you know, the, these have little diaphragms in them and, and it got a hole in it. And so, you know, the top two thirds is supposed to be air and just a little water in the bottom to maintain pressure anyways it filled the whole thing up with water but you know these things exist they break all the time you know you can probably find them at you know scrap yards and all, all kinds of places you know this is our little scrap metal section over here and so this is just chilling out maybe I'll build some with it maybe I'll you know sell it for a couple bucks <laughs> 50 cents you know price of metal whatever but also like old hot water heaters I have my house in town I have an old hot water heater tank which uh, I found somewhere and somebody had stripped all the insulation off it's galvanized though so I don't know if I'd want to weld on that too much but the point is you can find these tanks you know they're good sizes this is this is pretty big I, mean, I don't know two two foot across or something you'll figure it out well that's my video uh, thank you so much for watching and Get out there and do something, brah. It's good to stay busy.